All right, guys, welcome back to the Bottom of the Ninth Podcast. I am your host, Elijah Rodriguez, here today with Ralph Garza. He's an Edinburgh native, but he also grew up and played at New Braunfels High School here, right up the road from where our studio is. How you doing, Ralph? What's going on, man? Doing good, man. How you doing? Oh, I'm grinding, man. We're grinding. We got we've had an episode every day this week, man. It's it's been a it's been a it's been a wild one, but it's this is a blast. I love doing this. It's so fun. Heck yeah, man. Putting the work up there. Yeah, man. We and I know you said you were you're out throwing some bullpens. How did how'd those go, man? I know where where'd you travel to to throw those? Are those in Texas or are you outside yeah. Texas or No, I'm here. Uh my dad lives in San Antonio and okay. so I, I stay close to him now he's getting a little bit older. Okay. I try my best to at least. And uh so I'll be throwing here in town at the local high schools. Uh there's some kids here, there's also some guys. Uh they actually live in shirts, more and more guys live. So I'll run into some guys over there too. Okay. That's cool though. That's pretty tight though. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I know last year, last year with the Rays, right? Mm -hmm, correct. Well, yeah. So you have you hopped around quite a bit. I know you were at the Rays and you were with the Twins. And you started off with the Strohs, though, right? You got drafted by the Astros. I did. I was. Uh, I got drafted uh, 15. Uh, worked my way and then um, made it debut with the Strohs. Went to the Twins and then Red Sox for like a week, maybe, and then uh, the Rays. <laughs> so awesome, man! You you you've experienced it. You've been around, man. Yeah, man. Got to see all kinds of different organizations, different thought processes. I bet. So, I bet. I bet. So, so let's start from the beginning, man. So you, you were born in Edinburgh, right? I was. I was. Born, born there. Did, there. Did, yeah, did you spend a lot of time there? Did Because I know, I remember here, dude, you were a big deal in San Antonio. Like everyone heard Ralph Garza. You were a stud, dude. Like everyone knew about you here. I mean, right. but San Antonio is a small town. So like we don't have like the most like immense, we're not a Dallas or a Houston. So, but I mean, you were a stud. Everyone was talking about you, man. That was, that was a thing back in the day. So. So kind of take us through that. Were you on varsity all four years of high school, or how did that go? Uh, I don't think I was on varsity. I think I made my freshman year. They put me up at the end uh, just okay. to try it. Uh, just kind of like get my feet wet kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But I remember as soon as I got there, man, I was I was ready. Because I was always trying to just be better than my brother, honestly, because I was <laughs> yeah. who I tried to be better than, honestly. But um, growing up, seeing the bigger kids and stuff, that's pretty much – what I tried to do and get to varsity my freshman year. Yeah, yeah. And so, so were you were you a pitcher your whole career? Was were you an infielder or did you play outfield? What was your what was your your position? Because we all know you're a pitcher uh, now, but yeah. Uh I started I think I want to say third base and then moved okay. to short for a little bit in high school. Uh, I did that. Um in uh select ball and stuff in high school they moved me around to first just because I was more of like I would hit hard or hit for, hit home runs every now and then. But uh it was mainly shortstop just trying to be agile, but pitching was, I had coaches that were telling me that were older, like, you'll be a pitcher when you get older. And I was like, all right, well, until then I'm going to be at short. So fair enough. Yeah. I mean, you, you got a strong arm. So, so mm -hmm. you're, were you getting, so were you highly recruited at a high school? Cause I know you went to OU, you played there. Um, yep. and I, and when, so I know like you went as a pitcher there as well. So when did it like start to hit? Like, Hey, this is good. I'm going to like, this is, this is like p pitching is my deal. Like, were you throwing nineties your junior senior year? Or was that like, when the when like recruiting the recruiting process really started for you uh man i could say i think i threw i think i hit 90 my first time my sophomore year maybe oh, okay um in high school but um once i got it wasn't really like that until college they told me to do the two-way thing just to get you there mm -hmm. um but as soon as i got there they're like your, your arm is strong uh let's roll with it and as a freshman i wanted to make an impact right away so they're like if you want to do that go on the mound and that's what i did and never looked yeah, back from there Makes sense, right? I mean, yeah, why not, right? So yeah. in, in high school, did um, did, were you highly recruited? Did you get a lot of offers? Was OU kind of just one of them that just felt like it stuck, or how'd that go? Uh, Yeah, I got a good amount of offers. I would, um, if you, I say like maybe two or three that I remember off the top of my head, but I remember um, OU offered me was my first school. Uh, Tim Tadlock, uh, actually, he recruited me and gave me the first phone call and stuff, and nice. I called my pops, and he's like, hey, if you feel like it's comfortable, it's a good spot. I'm like, yeah, man. So we took it and ran. So it was, it wasn't too highly recruited, but once I had the offer, man, I didn't look back. You didn't look back. Yeah. I mean, OU, dude, OU's a powerhouse. Like OU's a solid school. I, I knew a buddy of mine that played there as well. He, he ended up, we're, I'm a Juco guy. So we went around and I knew a lot of guys that kind of float, like fluctuated around and did a bunch of different things, but OU's a, it's a solid yeah, school, man. man. Very, very. I, I loved it there. And even like I go back, I haven't been back there in forever, but every time I go back, it's oh, it's so enjoyable. It's a blast over there, yeah. It's a still, and that's not Stillwater. That's OSU. You go to your Norman, right? Norman's where, yeah, Norman. Yeah, yeah. I get the two mixed up. <laughs> yeah, man. But, yeah, Norman. Yeah, Norman's the one. Yeah. So how did? So how was your? So the transition from playing. I know, like Texas ball's a little different. I mean, especially going from playing New Braunfels. I mean, 
Who, did y'all play around? Who's in y'all's district or over there? Uh, for New Braunfels High School? Yeah. Uh, at the time, it was uh, Steele, mm-hmm. uh, like Clemens, uh, maybe uh, I want to say Lee was in there. My, I remember from my senior year. But uh, I'd say there was a lot of San Antonio teams that we didn't play that were in our district that I remember. Uh, Churchill, I remember always beating us, man. Yeah. Churchill, they yeah, they're, they're good. They were good, yeah. man. They still are, I'm sure. But, <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I oh, can't yeah. really so, remember our district too much. Yeah, but so my the point being I brought that up was because, like, was there a huge difference? Like, I didn't play. And, and OU's in the Big Ten, yeah? That's a pretty big con- – like, they're they're a big conference. I mean, they're, they're pretty yeah. solid. It's a big jump. Was there a big jump? And this is something that I like to touch on just to give kids an idea of how mm-hmm. big the game really is. You know, you go from playing high school ball and, like, you're the guy. Was there a big jump, you think, from playing – at that level of high school and then hopping straight into a, a, a major com- a major conference like that and playing with is the talent level big big did you see a big difference there um honestly at first no uh only because i didn't really try to look around and see what was what what was going on i tried to really focus on what i was doing at the time right. but then slowly as guys started progressing and started reaching their peaks like the john grays the do's <laughs> Matt Oversteez, all those guys, you're like, these guys, that's where you want to get to the next step. And then they go from there, you know? So there was uh, a little bit, but only if you, if you thought about it too much, then you would see a bigger one, but really it wasn't too much, but it was, it was enough to make you hungry again. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. I mean, that's, that's what it is. That's one of those things, man. It's like, cause when I went to go play Juco ball my first year, cause I went to mm-hmm. Carnaward my first year, then I left like playing at central Catholic, we're a much smaller school than New Braunfels. So seeing like the, right. the talent difference was just like immense. It was just like the biggest change. And I was like, this is like yeah. almost like eye opener shocker. You see, like, you know, like when you're playing here, it's like, dudes are mm-hmm. going like 80, 85, 86. You see it like the occasional 90. And then you go up to like San Jack and you got, they got dudes throwing a hundred and you're just like, what, what right. just happened? <laughs> yeah, it's man. insane, man. So I remember uh, it was funny. So I remember seeing that and I was lucky uh, during high school because my dad, uh, he would have me go places like Florida and Georgia and stuff. And I remember we having a conversation and he told me, you can either be comfortable with being the best on your team or in New Braunfels or we'll just worry about being the best in general. Not really yeah. giving your uh, really kind of narrowing it down to one small team or vicinity. Just try to be the best in general. So, yeah, you know, trying to being able to travel and see the talent and seeing guys that are just. 97 to 100 like you said man it's different <laughs> but you will get accustomed to it but it's really just trying to be the best that you can be and not limit yourself yeah kind of yeah you don't want to get wrapped up in all that stuff because i mean if you're that's one of those things man if you get too and you get too involved and you get too like into what everyone else like what you said earlier too into what everyone else is doing it, it can really <laughs> mess you up a little bit and take away from like your personal development so no, that's good your right. pops did that man he, he did it right yeah. he did it a good way I have yeah, to, what 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 select team did you play with growing up um, I was a couple. I kind of bounced around here and there. There was a uh, teams out of Austin. Uh, there was a team out of Bernie. Uh, but towards the end, towards the before college, was the Houston Banditos. Gotcha. Okay. And that team, man. That team was man. They had scholarship for days. <laughs> See, everyone, team. everyone knows the Banditos, man. The Banditos yeah. have been stacked for a long time. Man, they are. Man, they yeah, they're, they're good. <laughs> So, so you went to OU, you played, did you make an, did you play immediately out the gate your freshman year where you used a lot that first year? Yeah. Uh, from what I remember, yeah. Um, kind of in college is the short, you get a mm-hmm. short sample size, like they say. So I had the hot hand and luckily it just kept riding me and my body was holding up and it, I developed that way really just by playing more and more. Yeah. But freshman year, I I didn't think it was going to go that way, but I was definitely thrown into the fire, you know. <laughs> that's that's awesome, though, man. I mean, that's the thing. Yeah. Like, and obviously, it worked out for you. Like coming out of high school, you were you were throwing hard. You had you had the ability to make an immediate impact on a team of that stature. Mm-hmm. That's something that I I always talk to. I talk to guys a lot that make like we've had guys that that go and make play the play in the big leagues that made that first mistake going D one and maybe they weren't exactly ready yet. And they mm-hmm. go end up having to move around and change because like there's only one way you're going to get better and it's not riding the bench. It's like finding that right fit. And luckily, like you found the right fit at OU. They had a spot for you. They're ready for you. And you you kind of filled that spot perfectly. But there's mm-hmm. dudes that'll do that, man, that'll go to places and like that only way to really develop is by playing. So yeah. I think that probably helped you out quite a bit when you were going through and you went right into it. Heck yeah, man. That was one thing. It was, uh, I mean, in high school, we trying to get recruited and stuff. I remember the pressure of it, like D1, D1, D1. Mm-hmm. But let me tell you now, man, especially in pro ball, 
you see so many guys that you, like you said, Juco grinders or guys that were in Juco, man, you're just like, man, how did you not go D1 kind of thing, you know? So it's kind of <laughs> yeah. just because you didn't go D1, it's just as long as, like you said, it's the right fit and gets you developed the right way, man, It's it works out. It works out, yeah, man. So you were at OU for three years, right, or two years? Three. Three. Three years? Okay, you had well, you yeah. had to be there for three years. Yeah, I didn't know if those rules yeah. changed. So was yeah. it kind of the same? Were you a starter or were you a reliever your, your tenure at OU? Uh, I was a reliever for the most part. There was, uh, okay. there was some stints, uh, the last two years that they tried to, they mixed me like starter reliever kind of thing. Um, but after a while I just, all right, just leave him reliever. It's kind of one of those things though. It fits, you know, it's like it, it fit, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's where you really saw success. So why, like why switch it up? I know there's guys that get caught up in the starter or the reliever. Yeah. They want to be the, the, you know, like the guy and they want to go in there and, and finish games or start games and get the whole the whole shebang right. or whatever you want to call it. But I mean, I think like relieving dude is not a bad gig, man. I, I enjoyed it more than I did starting. Honestly, it was, it was a little bit more calming and it felt, it felt better to kind of get in there and you can kind of ride innings or piggyback on guys. So yeah, I don't know. Absolutely, man. And it, all, it, what started for me, why I liked relieving was every now and then I would come in after my brother growing up and okay. if the team hit him and I would come in so mad and just want to strike everybody out or <laughs> he did really good. I'd want to do better. So it was always, yeah. You yeah. Know, well, there you go. The cut ups, that's, that's kind of funny though, because my, my brother is four years younger than me, but I didn't get to play with him. It was mm -hmm. funny. He went to so he went to St. Mary's, and I went to play, I finished my career at St. Mary's here in San Antonio. Okay. Yeah, and uh, it was funny. I went my last year before because I needed Tommy John. I still need Tommy John. I haven't got it yet. I just refused to get the surgery. You're crazy, man. What yeah, do you dude. Mean? That's yeah. That's I just wild. like man, I'm just one of those guys, man. Like at this point, so I was like, when I, I popped it going into my red shirt senior year, right? So I was like, okay. Or mm -hmm. redshirt junior year. Yeah, junior year. And okay. I was like, okay, it happened over the summer. I went in, I rehabbed, I rehabbed. And we tried pretty much everything possible before, like, they cut you. Like, we tried the – they wanted to give me some shots or something. I don't know, some weird shots. That was the only thing I didn't go for. I was like, I'm not doing that crap. So when my right. brother came yeah. in, he got recruited. He came in. I was going to play, but at that point I told, told Coach Amigo, I was like, yeah, man, like, I'm not going to sit an extra year to come back and play, especially like no offense to St. Mary's, just it's D2. Like I'm not going to go get drafted or anything. That's not the, it's not going to happen. I'm that. just going to finish and, and get going and start working or whatever. So I didn't get to play with my brother. Mm -hmm. He was there though. He was there that first year with me, but yeah, I didn't, it didn't, man, that it didn't make it to the spring. That he ended cool. up playing all the way through, but yeah. So yeah. You're fortunate, man. You got to play with your brother. That's, that's sick though. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It was a lot of fun, man. I can't tell you just from, I don't know, maybe we were like nine, 10, nine to 12 years old. I remember just going from block to one end of the block to the other and just long tossing with him on the street. And That's awesome, dude. Our dad our dad still doesn't know. It's kind of funny. Uh, we actually hit his truck, and it's, the, the dent's still there. He just hasn't never seen it, and it happened. <laughs> Are like you serious? Yeah. Well, it's over we, now. Now, know, you brother, now you added hey, it now. Right? I <laughs> know. Hopefully he doesn't see this. <laughs> um, so... So you end up playing your three years at OU. When when was it that the draft started kind of coming into picture? I was like, okay, I might this might actually become a thing where there's scouts talking to you. How did how did that whole thing kind of develop? Um, I never really like scouts, the letters and stuff, the the questionnaires came into high school. Um, but that was never really a real thing until college. Um, as much as I wanted it to be a real thing in high school. Mm -hmm. College did you, was did you not get drafted out of high school? No, 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 no. Oh. Um, that was that was kind of the thing that kind of threw me off. I thought I was, and oh. you know, hindsight, it worked out for the best because I loved, yeah, yeah. It, loved the path and everything. But um, it never really happened until college, and then even in college, um, I got drafted what the twenty sixth, twenty seventh round, maybe. Yeah, and uh, it was never really a real thing until the phone rang, okay. and uh, that's when it kind of like became a real thing because I it was at a certain point I was like, ah, if it happens, I go back. If not, you know. Either way. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. But college so they, was when did, it started. Did they kind of, like, I know you went to 26 at that point. How did that, was that one of those things where you just, they just call you and say, hey, we just took you? Or, like, did, were anybody, was anybody telling you, like, you'd go earlier? Because I've heard, like, I don't want to say mm -hmm. horror stories <laughs> yeah, about right? the draft. Because I've had, I've had buddies of mine say, like, dudes are going to be, like, I know, like, a buddy of mine, Carson, we're actually going to have him back on tonight because we're going to talk to all my junior college guys. We're going to have, like, kind of a a podcast right. about Juco days and just how wild junior college is. But uh, he was telling me, one. yeah, it was, it's nuts, dude. It's crazy. But he was <laughs> telling me like, he was told, cause he ended up, and he's a six, five dude throws like 98. He throws gas. He's this big, massive dude. And he was yeah. like, he ended up going to Lamar. We played Juco together. He went to Lamar and they were telling him he was going to go in like the fifth. And then it was like the sixth, And then it just kept, kept trickling down. So 
I like mm-hmm. to hear these stories because I'm like, man, people people kind of over romanticize the draft sometimes and how it, they kind of get away from the business aspect of what it really is. I mean, that's really what it is. It comes down to dollar amounts and money and all that stuff rather than making someone a dream come true, which is like kind of you know, it's kind of shitty in, in a sense. But like that's how it that's yeah. really how it goes, man. It's it's cut mm-hmm. for it out there. So did they tell you anything like that? Was it going to be like, oh, you're going to go here and then you end up going in that round? Or was it kind of just like if it happens, it happens? not super um, into that whole thing or how to go. Yeah. I wanted to be into it. Um, but just seeing how my teammates and everything, how the, they were talking and what they were hearing, yeah. they were hearing more like how they were getting projected. And then when it came to me, I never really heard. Um, mm-hmm. I had a couple coaches tell me like, yeah, some scouts said 10 to 15 rounds. Um, but when you hear that and it doesn't sound like they're optimistic, you're like, I don't know if yeah, I believe that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like I said, man, there was a certain point where I was like, you know what? I'm just going to, if this is my last time, you know, being able to play baseball, I'm going to go all out. And I never really worried about it. Um, but like I said, scouts, the guy that called me, he's like, hey, we're about to take you in this round. Are you good with it? And it was like I had three seconds to say yes or no. And I was like, yeah, take <laughs> wow. me. You know, we'll make it yeah. work. And, yeah. And it was Jim Stevenson, man. Changed my life. I remember I was on the road and he called me and I, I was driving about to call my pops and my phone rang. I was like, I better answer this. So it <laughs> was yeah. random numbers. Oh yeah, man. Exactly. I was like, it looks like a Houston number. I should call this, you know? So, <laughs> so how, how did that, so take us to that. How did that feel? I know it, it was a little bit in the later rounds, but the, just the, the, the feeling of getting to play, like you're going to get to play professional baseball, I'm sure was insane mm-hmm. at any level. Yeah. So how did that feel? Did you call your dad after you celebrate with your family? How, how did that go? I'm sure that was, and that's probably a special moment that'll sit with you for a really long time. I'm sure. Very, man. I can't tell you, I probably called my dad 20 times in the span of 10 minutes, <laughs> honestly, man, because I just kept calling him like, hey, I got drafted. And he's like, all right. And he, we didn't get to do the whole hear the name on the. the yeah, I mean, yeah, it doesn't happen that way. Yeah. Yeah. So like you said, it's not romantic, romantic like everyone thinks. But uh, called my dad a bunch, uh, just talked about it. And he's like, he's like, it's life changing. And uh, but every time uh, we talked, I remember telling him because our a pitching coach of mine, Jack Easy, told me he's like, it doesn't matter if you're the last guy or the first guy, just get your foot in the door. Yeah. Once you get your foot in the door, just barge right in. And I was like, I took <laughs> that around. Man. Man. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 I'm sure you took you took a second to take that moment in. I'm sure. And then obviously it's a pretty quick turn, right? They got you going flying wherever y'all are going to to short season, right? Yeah. So as soon as I want to say it was within two or three days, they flew me to Florida. Uh, I did the physical and everything, signed the mm-hmm. contract. Uh, I think I signed the contract before, but did the physical and then flew to short season. And immediately next day we had practice and games. And so, how, how was that? Was that kind of like a culture shock? Was it, was it different than what you'd been doing at OU? Was it, were there nerves? How are you, how are you feeling throughout that process? Um, I really wasn't nervy, man. I was more excited just because I didn't think it was going to happen. You yeah. Know? And then when it happened, I was like, all right, man, I'm here. Like, let's, let's see what it's yeah. about. And uh, the hardest thing for me, I remember uh, his name was Chris Holt, he's a pitching coach now with the Orioles. He told me the first day I saw him, I'm like, hey, coach. He's like, don't call me coach. And I was like, <laughs> it's probably the biggest culture shock for me at the time. I was like, all right, I got to stop calling people coach, you know? Really? You can't, they don't like to be called coach. Yeah, no, no. Either call them their first name or you just don't call them by their name, like at all. Don't, yeah, whatever see, you that's, do. That's weird. Right. See, I, that's that's what, the first I've heard of that. I guess, but like at the same sense, right? Y'all are like kind of like coworkers. Like y'all are working for the same goal. Y'all are working for the same company in a sense. So y'all are just like yeah. kind of yeah. like working together, I guess. It's one of those deals. Yeah. And luckily, uh, through the whole system, I've never really met someone that was super against uh, not being called coach. So for the most part, you know, everyone understands like we're all working towards the same goal, you know, so it's nice. That's pretty cool. So how, so what was your, what was your first out? I know you said you weren't nervous. You were, you're kind of just going with it. Like kind of almost like, like you're just excited to be there. Like there's just nothing holding you back yet. You're ready to go. So what was, how was that whole, like you play your short season. How did that season go for you? Uh, It actually went really well. Um, Our manager at the time, his name was Ed Romero. I believe he was a very quiet guy, but uh, the season went well, man. I actually got pitcher of the year. He gave it to me at the end of the year. Dang. Uh, yeah, and we we had a team fine because we had gotten in trouble at like the apartments, and I ended up getting my money back. He's like, "Here, here's the, the your prize money for winning pitcher of the year." So <laughs> it was cool, man. That is pretty sick, man. I can't even. That's that's badass, dude. So at that yeah. point, you were so you're pitching. What was your rep? What was your rep? What were you throwing? You were throwing fast, I'm sure too. Was it a two seam? What, what's your what's your pitches? Yeah, uh, at the time it was four seam, uh, somewhat of a change up slider and a sinker. Um, somewhat of a changeup, but you got to describe yeah. that. I have to hear this. 
Yeah, so change up man took me forever to learn. Uh we I can't tell you, I probably worked on it for like three or four years before it became oh, a, a really good pitch to use. Yeah, so that and then I learned to cutter uh that uh that off season. I remember uh I went to a thing called um not extended, but uh it was an extra like training session after the year. And okay. they made me throw only change ups and cutters and <laughs> I never threw any of those pitches. So for Jeez. the next month we're in lives as I'm facing, you know, Marlins and the Astro players. I'm getting lit, just throwing, yeah, trying just... to throw change ups and cutters, man. So That's wild. It was... So you didn't touch a fastball. You're just throwing change ups and cutters the whole time. Yeah, pretty much. Like I would throw fastballs just to get the fastball intent. But yeah, they told yeah. me like, uh, I remember they told me at the end like, don't come in back to spring training not having learned a cutter or a change up. Uh oh. I was like, <laughs> well, sense of urgency is time to go now, man. <laughs> And I'm assuming you figured it out, right? I and mean, you said you figured it out into yeah. a good pitch. You did, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good, both, good, good. good. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, and so, you finished your first year. Where did you train? Where, or do you still train? It. I know you said you're in San Antonio, which is kind of a shame, man. We would have brought you in here. We're right up the road. We're by Six Flags, man. Right. Yeah, that would have been. Dang, cool. we should have had you in. We'll bring you up here sometime, bro. We'll bring you up in here. Show you, yeah. show you around. Show you some of the cool yeah. stuff you got going on. I'd love to see it. Absolutely. Yeah, dude. But. We're still that same store off Nakona though, but we've got some we've got some changes up there. It's the same store that's been around since since we were in high school. I'm sure it's the same place, but our offices yeah. are pretty sick. I got to show you the offices. But anyway, yeah. so you finish. Where do you where do you train at? Do you train here in San Antonio? Uh, I train here in New Braunfels. Okay. So there's a it's just a small gym here, local. Uh, me and my buddy, uh, he's at, I'm trying to get him on the fitness grind too right now. <laughs> yeah. He's a little bit he's a little bit bigger guy, but he's we train here locally and then uh I'll just train at the the local high school and track and stuff right there. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, where you throw your pins and stuff like that? Yeah, like I said, there and then every now and then shirts if it's raining or if it's too cold or something. <laughs> yeah, you gotta go indoors. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, cool though, yeah. man. So so and you've been training at that same spot since since forever, uh, I guess since the big league started? Yeah, um, really. Every 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 uh, off season since professional baseball started, I come back. Like I said, my pops is here, so every now he's getting a little bit older. He's sixty three, so mm -hmm. he's getting getting up there. So I like to stay around. He doesn't travel too much. So. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So <laughs> so you come home. You, they tell you you better learn to change up in a cutter. So you work on that all year, and then you go to your you got your invite to spring training. How how mm -hmm. I haven't that's that's funny that, that I'm going to ask this because I haven't asked, and I've, we've had quite a few minor league guys. We've had some big league guys. How, what is the atmosphere of spring training? I haven't asked. This is this is interesting. I want to know. I don't know why I haven't asked at this point. But what's yeah. the atmosphere of spring training? What is, what is that like? Because I know guys are in there. Uh, pitchers and catchers obviously report weeks before position players. Guys show up. What what mm -hmm. is that atmosphere like? Are you guys just there? Is it pretty much just like a practice environment, or are guys coming in like hot, ready to go, like they're game ready? Oh, they're coming in hot, man. Let me tell you, okay. most of the guys in spring training, at least that I've seen um they usually hit the ground running uh the guys that are you know trying to compete for that job or you know trying yeah. to get somewhere quick um it's they come in and hit the ground running uh it's very competitive uh but at the same time you're still it's still spring training so we got to be smart about things so right right yeah you don't want to overdo it <laughs> yeah there's a lot of there's definitely when you're the first day is first few days of spring training when you're rolling out in the gym and stuff man you see people walking in it's a, definitely a good vibe but it's definitely time to get after it kind of feel <laughs> yeah so what yeah. was there any I know like you went so you went to so that was in what fifteen or fourteen mm -hmm. you got drafted in fourteen, so your first spring training was in fifteen, right? Uh I was drafted in fifteen, first spring training was in sixteen, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So the Astros were already on the come up. They were already coming up, right? So was there yeah. any was there any because I mean obviously before that they weren't the hottest team in the, in the league and then right. they've been on an incredible run, I mean, ever since, you know, what, six fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, they've been on a tail, oh. right? So what was that atmosphere? I mean, did you see anybody that like at the time? Because I mean, spring trainings with it's everyone. It's minor league guys mixed in with the big league dudes or the guys that are mm -hmm. the dudes, right? Was there any any like shell shock? Like, oh my god, like these are the guys I've been watching since I've been a kid. Like, was there anything like that when you got there for the first time? Mm, for me, I would say no, only because I felt like I didn't have time to be shell shocked. True. True. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. like if I'm there, it's time to go, kind of thing. And uh, not at the same time, I did like pay attention to what the older guys were doing and how they mm -hmm. went about their business. But at like, if, if we're facing lives and Hey, you're facing these three guys and they're big names. Like I don't have time to worry about, Oh, I'm facing them. I got to worry yeah, about you, you, you treat them like any other batter. Like they're just another dude in the box. I feel that. Yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah. I respect that. It's not, I mean, I can't say I'd probably go up there and, and like shit my pants probably, but it's all good. Like that's why y'all are yeah. up there and, I, and I'm not, man. But, but that, yeah, that, that's crazy though, dude. So, so how did that first spring training go? Did you go out there? Did you gel well? How did how did that go? 
Uh, it went well. Uh, for the most part, um, I remember just trying to, you know, be observant. Don't get in the way. Don't right. make anybody mad, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it, w- it went well. Uh, the guys were cool. They made it super comfortable. Um, luckily, at the time, it was like Presley, Davinsky, Joe Smith, a lot of good guys, man, that mm-hmm. really, you know, they weren't really trying to uh, make us feel like inferior or they were better. They were just trying to help us, you know, hey, come along with us, you know, get better. Yeah, yeah. So it was great. So that's good, man. Because I know I forgot how I was talking. I was talking to my buddy Riley. He played. He's a free agent right now too, but he played with the Diamondbacks for the last two years. Mm-hmm. And he was saying that sometimes there are some guys that are like that. that some of the bigger guys that mm-hmm. that treat the minor league guys like that. And I know that you know we'll get into it, but like I know minor league is a grind, man. It's 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 tough. Like any major minor league dudes that are going through it, it's it's a grind. It's tough. And he was saying that there's a lot of times that it's almost like the big league guys who have made it, who have been in in the league for a long time, are like seeing that it's like a how do you say it? It's like a, um, like a path that you have to take to get to that point. But it's mm-hmm. sometimes it's kind of hard, man. That's not the way I personally, and I you know talking to him, he said the same. It's, that's not yeah. the best way to be. That's not the best way to be, especially like when you're trying to grow and you're trying to be a better ball player, that's tough to make it happen. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. And that's what you're saying. Like there's, it's, that's good that a lot of guys were able to take you up and, and kind of help you out and show you. But like, I've heard, like I said, horror stories about guys that are just absolute assholes. Yeah, it's, man. It, it, yeah, it's it's tough to see because every now and then, like I've maybe heard a few guys talk like that, where it's kind of yeah. like it's got a like a come to man kind of thing, like are you mm-hmm. gonna become a man or not? But it's like man, the 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 stress and everything else that comes with the minor league grind away from actual minor league baseball, like it's it's tough. And just because I think certain guys went through it, like myself or other teammates went through it, doesn't mean that other people should have to go through those same things. Right. Because you know? it's not yeah. it's not easy. It's not easy. No, that's and we we're talking because you know I was talking to you know from a I know you said you're you're kind of in the health and fitness area you like to work out and stuff like that so that's cool and I'm mm-hmm. sure like and this was my question because I I graduated with an exercise and sports science yeah and I do training and stuff on the side as well and I was telling you know we talked to Jose Trevino uh, the catcher for the Yankees and, yeah. and I was talking to him like he had a home Mike, run <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's a good dude man I love Jose right. he's such a cool dude he's such a humble dude. Great. I heard awesome, nothing but great guys about that thing, man. Yeah, he's he's awesome, man. And I was talking to more from like a recovery standpoint. I was like, bro, like as a catcher, you're catching, you know, you got 100, 100 whatever games a year, and you're mm-hmm. catching X amount. Of, like, where do you recover, dude? Like every day, you're down there for hours, squatting hours, hours, hours. I'm like, where's the recovery? And that's when I thought, I'm like, okay, if this guy is like saying saying it's tough to recover and come back, and these guys are staying in some pretty nice places, they're traveling pretty nice. Mm-hmm. What does that say about the minor league guys, man? Like they're doing the same damn thing. Yeah. And it's they're, they're sleeping in motels. Sometimes they're sleeping in like not so great places. It's tough to recover. It's tough to really like, how do you take yeah. care of your health and stuff like that? I know you, you seem mm-hmm. like you're in really good shape. I've seen your Instagram you look like you're, you're, you're in pretty damn good shape. So I'm sure that yeah. you take it maybe a little bit more serious than some other guys, but what are some tips that you do? Um, not, you're not going into your big league in your big league time. I'm talking back when you're in the mm-hmm. minors and you're really grinding through before you made that debut and kind of put yourself on that stage. What yeah. were some of the things you did to stay healthy and make sure that your health was staying at, at its peak? Um, one thing I really worked on because I was really bad at it uh, in college was mobility. Okay. And that was in my hips, um, my thoracic, everything. Uh, if The more elastic, the more mobile you are, uh, from what they would tell me, the easier it is to stay healthy, uh, stay away from injuries. Also, man, just I listen to my body more than anything else because there's those – eight hour bus trips after a game at that ends at 1130. Hey, drive <laughs> seven, eight hours to Midland, Texas to play another 530 game the next day. Um, you wake you get to Midland at 8am, go to bed and you wake up You're like, man. So it's really, man, the two things I worried about was listening to my body, whether it's tired that day or not. And uh, flexibility and mobility. Is what nice, kept me, that's good. Yeah. Kept me Cause I mean, like it's tough, dude. Like, like what you just said, you, you pretty much, you, you know, people sleep in buses like it's possible. Like every everyone who's been an athlete has done it, mm-hmm. but it's not good rest. It's not no, good. Man. No, man. It's no. not. It's terrible. Yeah. yeah. It's, and it's not good. At 13 games in a row, you know, or 13 days of games in a row, man, it's it's definitely a grind, which makes it even more of a reason. Like the minors, man, it's 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 not for the faint hearted or the. No, but it, it definitely needs to improve, and they've slowly been doing it, though. So that's the- yeah, they have. They have. They have been making a couple improvements here and there. We've seen some some better things happening because it was pretty bad for a while, and yeah. especially before, like before, obviously before you got there, it was way worse. I'm sure, mm-hmm, but you real. know. Mm-hmm. So so let's fast forward. I know you you made did you make your debut with the Astros? I know you made it yes. in 21. Mm-hmm. You made it with the Astros. Yeah, yeah. 
So how did, yeah. okay. So explain that. Well, before we get there, how was COVID for you? Let, let's hear this. Cause I always ask guys how COVID really played out and yeah. like what, in that situation, cause it's always interesting to hear what they did, how they handled it, what they did in that time that they were off. So, mm-hmm. so explain. So were you at spring training that year when COVID hit? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And how did we that were, go? So that happened that, that went so fast, man. Cause one day we had a meeting about, uh, with some team doctors about COVID and then mm-hmm. two days later, like, Hey, everybody go home kind of thing. <laughs> and it was all kind of just shell shocked, like what's going on or what, what will happen. Um, but yeah, COVID was a wild time in spring training, man, for that, those. Yeah, that man. Cause the other thing was like a lot of my buddies, like a lot of them got let go cause they, they cut a lot of minor league rosters in half. So that was like really like devastating for a lot of guys. So I know that was a bad part, obviously. Aside from yeah. baseball, a lot of people lost a lot more than that. I'm, I'm not going to take away from that, you know? Right. But I, so, so what did you do? Obviously, you got to stay. You were part of the team. You were part. Were you, like, doing that alt-site thing? Was that something that people were doing at that time for you guys? Yeah. Um, so the alt-site was in Corpus. Um, but at the time, when they told us to go home, we were kind of like, hey, what do we do? A lot of us were, hey, let's go to Round Rock. Let's work out there together. Uh, there's a guy that uh, he would let us use his uh, facility, which was super fortunate. Cool. So a lot of us did that, um, but the alt site and like spring training 2.0, I got invited to. But when I got there, I actually tested positive for COVID. Dang. Unfortunately. So yeah, so and then I couldn't test negative for like the whole month. So Jeez. while the whole spring training 2.0 is going on, man, I'm in a room just losing my mind, like just trying to Dude. get out. I want to play, you know. <laughs> Dude, it's funny but, that you say that because my buddy John King, the same thing happened to him when the whole thing had they they sent him to the extent if they call it I've heard it called different things, whatever, because every club was doing something different. Mm-hmm. Um and he was with the Rangers and he said the same thing that they just lock you in your room pretty pretty much and you have to that's insane, dude. It's like isolation. That's that would drive you yeah. nuts. Yeah, man. And I remember uh after the first two weeks, they called like, Hey, you're gonna take another test and then we'll call you next day. And the, the team uh, doctor, uh, Baca, called me. He's like, Gars. And the way he sounded, I was like, oh, don't tell me I failed again, man. He's like, you got to wait another two weeks. And I was like, oh, mm. my goodness. Just he was saying, Yeah, he was telling me that he was just throwing his balls against the wall, just doing anything to stay, like, some sort yeah. of active because he's just sitting there watching TV with nothing else to do. Yeah, man. And it was so, uh, luckily, Uber Eats and DoorDash was a thing. I actually yeah. ordered, like, uh, two cases of waters. And – morning or breakfast lunch and dinner i would do three sets of 10 of split squats so with waters uh sit-ups and push-ups just you go, like dude. You said, stay active man you had to do what you had to do so you were so you were sick but you were like one of those ones that like got it but like didn't feel like that sick yeah. i'm assuming yeah that yeah sucks, i was in the dude. room just like oh man it was yeah it was tough but that luckily sucks. i came out once i got out of the room we went to corpus and that was kind of the realization, like, hey, this may be my last year because if I don't make it this year or, like, you know, it's gonna this get... is the year to make it. Yeah, so. yeah. So, so that's the year to make it. In 21, you did make it. So how was, how was that process? Because I know, obviously, after the 2020 season, that all thing happened and everyone played with no fans. And then 21 came back and things were, like, returning a little bit to normalcy. Was there a spring mm-hmm. training in 21? I can't remember. Um. Yeah, there was, actually. I remember it. Okay. So, and mm-hmm. that was the year. So take us through that year, man. How'd that process go? And then I know you made it kind of in August. You made it in August, right, of, of 21? Yeah. yeah. So so, uh, so give us kind of like a rundown of that season to that moment and how that all happened. Okay. Um. So I remember the spring training of 21, I came in. I was like, I'm in my head, I'm trying to make the team out of the gate, you know. And there was a couple yeah. guys that told me some stories where they did. So that's my head. That's a, That's what I'm trying to do. Probably not going to happen, but here we go. And then as the season went on, it was really up to me. If I wanted to keep doing it or not, if I wanted to keep playing, hey, my talent level and my capability was there. It's up to just I wanted to do it. And then after, I think, in June or July, I was like, I don't know if this is going to happen, man. They got, you know, a couple kids coming up. Hunter Brown just got there. I was like, Mm -hmm. he's about to be a guy, so he's probably going to get a step, too. So and then I remember being on Whataburger drive through with my uh, my roommate at the time. And then our manager calls and I was like he's only calling for one thing and I, hopefully it's the good thing, you know? Yeah. And, uh, once that happened, man, that was, that was crazy. Cause they were playing the Dodgers and the Padres, uh, when oh, I wow. there. and that was, yeah. man, that was a game to get thrown into right there. <laughs> so, so you had, so I'm assuming you had a pretty solid year going into that moment, right? I mean that, cause everything yeah. kind of had to lead up to that point. Right. So did, 
Were you were you on the road and they flew you out to where they were at, or how, how did they give you? Just they just call you and say, "Hey, we're we're pulling you up. We need you to hop on a plane, whatever, to get to where we're at." Yeah, luckily they were in uh, Houston at the time. I th- I'm pretty sure, and um and we were in Sugarland, so right down the road. So oh, okay, all they okay. told me they're like, "Hey, just grab your stuff at the field. We'll have a we'll have a a driver come and get you." So that was kind of cool. That's pretty and, sick. Uh, yeah, they just drew me to the stadium. But when I got there, they're like, "Who are you?" And I was like, it's my first day, man. It's my first day. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the, it's just my first day. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it's all good, bro. <laughs> so, and I know you said you don't really get nervous because you really, you live in the moment. And I respect that entirely because there's not a lot of people that can really kind of compartmentalize or differentiate the two. They can be like, okay, like I feel this, but there's a job that needs to get done. Sometimes the feelings kind of mesh and it's really hard to differentiate the two pieces. Very were you nervous at were you nervous at that point cuz now it's like okay yeah. this is what you've been dreaming of this is every kid's dream really that plays baseball this is it mm-hmm. how were you feeling at that moment when you got you finally got to the clubhouse dude interrogates you doesn't know who you are before he lets you in <laughs> how, how are you feeling um as I'm in the clubhouse uh when I got there I really wasn't nervous but as the we threw and then I showered and just waited for the game and I want to say that's when the nervousness started to build up but then once you're out in the field and you're back with, you know, your teammates and like, hey, you're talking about scouting reports and how to attack hitters and stuff. It kind of goes away because you're just getting lost in the moment. But uh, I remember when I was on the mound in my debut, I wouldn't say nervous, but that was I remember telling uh, my buddies that was the most free baseball I've ever felt because I felt like there was as much as there was so much on the line and it was extra innings against the Padres. I felt like nothing could go wrong because everything that I've worked towards in the past 28 years, has come to like fruition kind of thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. You're there. Like this is happening. Right. So yeah, so, the nervousness wasn't there really, but I mean, that that's, that's even better. So, I mean, that's kind of cool though. Like it's like almost like the relief of like, this is what I've worked for. Like we're here, like it's here. Yeah. Like now we, now we just play basically. Yeah. And now it's time to go kind of thing. So, yeah. and who was, who was the first batter you faced? Um, first batter I faced but didn't face was Tatis. They intentionally walked him. Oh, wow. Man, let me tell you, too. So I'm on the mound, and I get the ball from uh, uh, Breggy, and I catch it, and I look to home plate, and he's walking to first. And I was like, what happened? And like, yeah. we, we walked him. I was like, no, I was going to get him out. But <laughs> but he hey, ended up Tatis, Tatis is cool, though. At least you, you were there. You almost did. You almost got him. You almost faced that him. Close, so, uh, that close. So who, was the, uh, so who was the official first batter that you faced? Uh, I want to say Hosmer, Eric oh, Hosmer. Damn. Okay. Yeah. 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 And he he had a ball that I thought was gonna go out of Minute Maid through the roof, but it ended up staying. It was a fly out to left. I forget who was. Oh, okay. Left, okay. But, yeah. So, but he. Wait, so when you when you got him out, was it even more of like a, okay now we're now we're like now we're we're cooking type type deal? Yeah. Yeah. Very. Very. And he swung at the like one of the first fastballs that I threw, and that was one like hey people get out here too and you know yeah so, I mean, it's part of the game right. Yep, how exactly. many how many innings did you throw in that in that debut? Uh, just one, just, just one. Just the one. Yeah. Um, I think after him it was uh Will Myers. He had he had a home run, which I don't know how he hit a down and in <laughs> sinker the other way, but he did. And then um, I think there was a double, a ground out, and a strikeout to end it. Gotcha. So yeah. so you made your debut. You're mm-hmm. you're now a big league pitcher. Right. So you finished the year with the Astros, right? I mean, that year. Y'all had to run that year too, right? I mean, 21, y'all went pretty far, I'd yeah. say. Yeah, so, so they, I think it was around the trade deadline and everything mm-hmm. is when they needed to make room. Uh, a guy named Josh James came off, and then I got DFA'd, and the Twins picked me up maybe three days later. Okay. And, but that was the day, man. They're, they've been making runs every year, though, the Astros, man. They're yeah, crazy. yeah. So they move you when they moved you to, to Minnesota. Did they put you on a? Were you in the minors? Or did you go to that to that forty man? Uh, yeah, I was on the forty man, but I was uh, I went to the triple A for like I think a week. Oh, and okay. Then they, then they kicked and then they me pulled up. you back up. So yeah, <laughs> did you pitch up there as well? Did you that same year in twenty one? Did you pitch up there? Yeah, yeah, I pitched. I pitched man a lot uh, for Minnesota, from what I remember. But those guys, man, they were a one guys. The staff and the the players, they yeah. they helped a lot for for how it was. And what was what was it like playing in Minnesota versus playing in Houston? Was there a big culture difference? Because Houston fans are cultish; yeah. they're very like right. They're very <laughs> in it, right? How very. are how are the Minnesota fans versus how was it playing in Minnesota versus playing in Houston? Was it a big culture difference? Uh, a little, yeah. Um, the twins, the twin fans were great. They were, I mean, they were very passionate about their baseball. Um, but it was more there. It felt like they were there to enjoy the game. 
Mm-hmm. And Houston fans feels like they're there to like just beat the team. That's all they want. To do. <laughs> it's a different. It's yeah. a different feeling. I feel you. Yeah, but Houston's yeah. kind of been like bred into this. They, you know, they, we sucked for a long time before you even were close to getting there. Like they were terrible for a long time. But yeah. those those fans are like the same fans that were there for the whole thing. So like they finally get this moment where they've got this run. So they yeah. feel like they're like right in it with the same player. It's weird. It's a weird vibe. I gotta say, hey, it's a weird vibe. Hey, don't stop the wave. Just ride it, man. Just ride it as long as they can. I know they will. Yeah. So I got to ask, so growing up, were you an Astros fan? And so did playing for Houston have a different feel than than really playing for the Rays or for Minnesota? It did, um, only because the team was so close. Um, yeah. Growing up, we would take trips to Houston all the time. I remember going to a couple games. But playing there definitely felt, you know, it felt more at home than just because we're right down the road from it. Right, you're like three hours away from home. It's, it's insane. Yeah. Like that's, you know, I yeah. talked to um, – I was talking to a buddy of mine, um, or we're going to talk to a buddy of mine who plays now. He played at UTSA, and now he's going to go. He He's in the Astros organization. I think he's in AA. His name's Brian Arias. And, okay, you know, yeah, was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was just talking to yeah. him, and, and he was like, dude, it's just like to get to play. Like, like you're you're not at home, but you're basically at home. Like, it's a different feel. Like, it's it just your family can come to games. It just feels like a different atmosphere. Like, yeah, and, man. Like, yeah, my buddy playing for the Rangers, he said it was awesome because, like, you get to share, like, those debut moments with, like, your family. They get to go to those games because you're only, like, mm-hmm. a couple hours up the road. Like, that's insane rather than, like, getting shipped off to, like, New York or, like, Cali right. or something. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah. yeah, and I've heard – I've had teammates. They've had to, like – they've had to go across country, and then immediately they call their family, and now the family's got to figure out how to get over how there. How to get there, yeah, to watch that so, moment happen, yeah. Yeah, so we were luckily – it was right down the road. My dad had a short drive, so very Yeah, fortunate. there you go, man. So he was there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. so, so you finished the year with Minnesota. Yeah. How did, how did the Rays come into play? Um, the Rays came into play. So I finished the year with Minnesota, went to spring training, uh, had my first outing. And then I think they signed Correa the next day. And then I was oh. the guy to get off the 40. And, uh, when I think it was maybe two or three days again, I was in the hotel room and they called and said, Hey, the Red Sox picked you up, went, uh, down the road. Then they called. Or I went to throw a couple bullpens, went to AAA, and then two days after the season started, like, hey, we DFA'd you. Then the Rays called. Like, <laughs> that's that was insane. Probably, like, man, within an hour they called, and like, because it was supposed to happen quick. And they're like, hey, you're going to uh, Nashville. And I was like, all right, who's in Nashville? Like the Rays. I was like, okay, great. So, well, <laughs> let's see how it goes. But yeah, that's... man, the Rays. Yeah, they're happy fast. So they're just sending you all, like all over the place like that. How, okay, how what was going through your head at this point? Because like I I feel like if you went to Boston, did mm-hmm. was there a feeling that I'm not going to be here very long? Was that something that you knew, or was it like okay I'm here and then all of a sudden it was like a, like a shock? Like okay I got to leave again. Uh, when I got there, because I like reading the room most of the time, mm-hmm. I could tell I was like this probably ain't going to last very long. Just being yeah. around and seeing like guys who's up next and stuff. Um, so in my head, I wasn't going to be there very long, but when the Rays, uh, had called, man, it was kind of a, it was a better feeling, you know, it felt yeah, like, like it, right yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so you go to play in Tampa. So mm-hmm. you're playing, you, did you play in the bigs with Tampa too? I, there's pictures with, yeah. I saw your picture with Brett Phillips. So yeah. I feel like you did. Yeah. So yeah, how, how was what was that squad like? Cause they're a special squad too, man. They got glass now. They got Phillips. They had, um, they have some really, they have some dudes out there. So how, what was it like playing in Tampa? Tampa was a, it was a lot of fun, man. Uh, playing on that team, those guys, uh, they're a lot of fun. Those guys are a very, very close knit group right there. Yeah. Um, there's, there's some young guys and there's some older guys that, you know, the younger guys are following, but I know that teams, they're very raw and very hungry. That's yeah. what I know, you know? Yeah. They and then are. you have, you have guys like Glass now, Rass, uh, Springs, and you got the bullpen that they have, man. It's oh, yeah. Like, dude. They're, well, they're dirty. Yeah. They're going to be, man, they're going to be guys and Shane. Yeah. Shane, oh, dude! Yeah, he, that's right. What what he did last year, man. Seeing that when I was there for the for the the short time I was there, man. Watching what he did, just every outing was like, man. It's it's not the game's not this easy, you know. And he made it look like <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I love, dude. I love watching like last night. I was like one of my favorite to watch because he's really a two pitch guy, but he is so like, oh, he's almost like an enigma. Like you don't really know why he's like. And I'm not taking anything away from him at all. Like, I just, I'll never yeah. do that because he's that good. But you're just like, dude, he's only throwing two pitches, but he's so long oh, that his man. stuff is filthy. You're just like, what yeah. the hell is going on? And I remember watching him. He warmed up, a, he had a couple bullpens in Tampa, and then he had a couple in Durham when I was there, man. Mm-hmm. Just watching him, and I'm like, 
man, that's a guy with just the frame that uses everything he has the right way, man. It's yeah, watching it, him go live is incredible. He's one of the few guys that that is so in tune with his body and he just works out like a monster and he does all that mobility. Like he's insane. So yeah. to watch him pitch is like, you can see every ounce of training that he does goes right into his, into his routine and what he does on the mound. It's, he's one mm -hmm. of the few that do that. Cause there's some guys that I, and I'm not taking anything away from, cause there's some guys that you watch in the big leagues that you're just like, what the heck is this guy doing? Right. But it works, yeah. but it works. You're just like, what, you're not going to say anything, but you're just like, if this guy did X, Y, Z, and it's just looking from like a fitness or a, a sports phys physiologist standpoint. You're just like, there's so much more this guy could do to move more efficiently and be better. But you're just like, it's one of those things like you're as a baseball player, you're like, just don't touch him. Just let him yeah. do what he does. It's baseball, man. You know, it's kind of a thing. Yeah, it's weird. It. Very, very. But yeah, glass is this peak thing, man. He's crazy. So, so I have to ask, and I know you probably don't want to say, but I'm going to ask anyway. What so far, you know, you've got, you've had the opportunity to bounce around. What's mm -hmm. been your favorite place to play that just like the atmosphere playing in that, in that, in that park, it doesn't have to be necessarily with a feel with a team that you were with, like playing at yeah. what park had the best feel like you just had either the best day, like everything combined was just a perfect mix. It was a perfect mix. Um, I would have to narrow it down to either, uh, I'd say Boston or Toronto. To it me. was a Fenway. Yeah. Um, only because that was probably, I would say Houston. Houston is very much so like Boston because they love the team. But yeah. Boston fans, man, just they're so invested in that team. Oh, like yeah. it's like I was. I was trying to explain it to uh, a buddy of mine. Like if you go to other uh, stadiums, they want you to lose. But Boston, you go to Boston, the fans don't want you to lose. They just want their team to win. You know? Yeah, yeah. So it's just kind a of different. A it's a different vibe. Because I mean, like very. You know, like like talking to Jose. There's some places that are really like cutthroat, like New York. Like yeah. He said that if you're if you're coming into New York, like if you're for New York, even if you don't perform and you play for the Yankees, it's like mm -hmm. it can go south if you're not doing solid. Oh but my like, gosh. If you're a yeah. visiting team coming into New York, like it's like going into like he said, like a buzzsaw. Like it is like yeah. it's it's tough to play there. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of fun because if you hold down what you gotta hold down and you know, hold your own, it's like mm -hmm. all right, y'all ain't saying anything worth anything. anything so <laughs> Yeah, that's wild. That way. Yeah. So but you yeah, play you, you played at Yankee Stadium then? Yeah, uh, I think in Minnesota, I pitched there once. Uh, I didn't get there pitched there last year, but yeah, mm. I pitched there once. Uh, okay, that was that outing was uh, actually pretty pretty funny. I'll never forget that one because that was the first time I remember facing Rizzo. I threw him four pitches, four balls, and only because I couldn't stop staring at his cleats. His cleats. Yeah, so he came up, man. And I don't know why. Like his, it was some pinstripe cleats, and I was like. Those are cool. And then I went ball one. I was like, all right, lock it in. Two, three, four. I was like, well, there that goes. <laughs> For some reason, I don't know, something happened. <laughs> Has yeah, there, and I know you said, like, what's been, like, what was the your hardest? And, like, I always ask this because, obviously, kids and everyone love to hear, like, inside of what's going on in big leaguers' mind when they're playing against some of these, like, crazy stars like Rizzo mm -hmm. and all these guys. So what's been, like, what was, like, okay, so what was your hardest at bat you've had to throw to somebody where you're like, this dude just, like, won't either get out or you just make some incredible pitches and they just either spit on them or you just can't get them out. What's been the hardest at bat so far? Um, the hardest at bat would be Michael Brantley at bat. Brantley. Okay. Yeah, man. And I'm going to be honest. Uh, there's guys that I would face like on that Astros lineup where I'm like, okay, I'm not really too concerned. I just handle what I got to handle, but there's stuff yeah. like Brantley, you can make a good pitch or like, I don't know how he even fouled that off or even like <laughs> put that in play, but he'll line it down the line somewhere and just like, well, He's just a professional hitter, man. Yeah, that's, all you can that's do. crazy. That's and that's yeah. so I've heard. I've heard Betts is a hard out. I've heard Mookie Betts is tough. I've yeah. heard Trout is incredibly hard. Mm -hmm. And now, now we those. have, now we have Brantley. So Brantley's made the list now of guys that are just incredibly yeah. hard to get out. Yeah, but I Brantley, feel like oh I feel like if you're in a big league lineup, you're hard to get out. Like you have to be hard to get out. I that's mean, for sure. That's for sure. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. man. Those guys they. They see dots on balls that are tiny, or they 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 time up bullets at this point, you know. Yeah. So so yeah. So, what was the difference? And and this is something I ask all the time because I like to know because everyone's got a different answer to it. Is there a big difference from playing like let's say minors all and it will encompass all minors because I know there's a big jump. I've heard there's big jumps from A to double, but mm -hmm. then from the bigs to triple is not a huge jump because those guys are the guys that are going you know like pretty much like this all year. So it's yeah. pretty much like an elevate, like a like a lowered big leagues, but mm -hmm. the big. So there's a big jump. I'm assuming from A to double A, right? Is that is that about accurate? Yeah, you could say that. Very much so. I thought so. Um, just with hitters, and they're really 
raw potential there. Yeah. Uh, those guys would there's those guys would make you pay opposed to guys in the single lane stuff. Yeah, yeah. So is there a big difference from playing at like Oklahoma to playing in the big leagues? Is there because those are the guys that normally you see that eventually make it up to the big leagues when you're playing in like the Big Ten, the SEC, the Big Twelve. Yeah. All those guys, those are those are dudes, right? So it's like, is there a big difference playing those guys? Obviously, guys come in and they polish tools or they come out who they were maybe at that college level or not who the same player they were when they make it up to the league. But is there exactly. a huge difference or what's the biggest takeaway you can get? Like, is it these guys have better pitch selection? They're just better hitters overall. What's what's the difference from a pitching standpoint? Uh, from a pitching standpoint, the difference between, like, I would say college and yeah, big leagues is just the approaches, man. Mm -hmm. Um You'll see guys go up there, and you're. It's more of a chess match at that point in the big leagues. You're not really worried about, all right, are my hands get my hands here or that. You're like, all right, what's he working? What's he working towards? What's he trying to get me to do? And mm -hmm. then you try to work against that. But watching the hitters, man, they their approach has really never changed, and that's really the biggest thing that I've noticed. They're looking for. They have one thing in their mind, and if that isn't it, all right, then it's this other thing. That's it. Awesome. Um, opposed to just like college or high school. All the work and that, all they're thinking about is my hands here to here, or my hips here, or you know my arm here. It's more of a, a chess match at that gotcha. point, in the big leagues, than it is in college. Gotcha. That yeah. makes sense because like the game, it, it just gets more advanced, right? It's no longer a point A to B. There's there's so many different aspects going, and these are the best of the best. Like these, like you guys are the best of the best. There is the game has to offer. So like you would assume that there's so much more happening rather than just like I just need to hit the ball. It's no longer just like. I just yeah. need to get a hit. It's now like, okay, this guy's going to – it's a chess match. That's the best way you could probably put it I, from what I've heard, and yeah. that sums it up. I've never heard chess match, but that's essentially when, when I'm thinking about it now, it, it fits a lot better. Yeah, only only because, man, with the, the capabilities of people throwing, you know, 93-mile-an-hour sliders that move like this or guys hitting 500-foot home runs, man, it's, 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 a, it's a lot to deal with, but that's how they simplify it, you know, yeah, kind yeah. of thing. So, so, so the, the hardest, your hardest out – has been Brantley, which is surprising, but he's a good hitter. He's a good hitter, man. Very good, he's hitter. A good dude. Very so, good hitter. So what is what is your so right now? What's your go to? I know you you just threw some bullpen. So what's your go to pitch? Like what's what's working for you right now? What are you writing? What are you putting your hat on right now? What's what's working um, for you? I'd say that the so I do the the drop down thing a little bit, oh, okay. and I'll say that's really going right now. Um, I'm at a point right now where these bullpens uh, the past two or three years, uh, I feel way better now with these bullpens than I have in the past two or three years. So that's good, and I'm riding that wave. So as long as it's, you know, progressing in the right direction, you know, and trending the right way. But the sliders and the sinkers are really taking off right now. So you, have you, you've always been from the slider? You used to throw up here, right? Yeah, so up here is the lefties, and down here are the righties, really. Oh, so and, you switch it up, mid, so you're not just in one arm slot anymore. Yeah, and it's not too crazy of a variation. It's just like a bend at the waist. But uh, yeah, it's definitely different attack plans to different hitters. Okay, now so for the people who aren't who aren't, I guess, seasoned enough to know the difference, and when we say like mm -hmm. this from top to the side, yeah. what's the reasoning for that? You getting more more break on certain pitches from over here rather than getting more run on top? What's the what's the reasoning for the for the drop down? Yeah, so uh, the reasoning started in college. They just wanted me to have another pitch uh, to the lefties. Funny enough, and. Uh, once I got to pro ball, they're like, hey, the movement you're getting horizontally is, is what we're looking for now at the, where the game's changing to. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of just try to improve that. And then from here, they're like, well, the sinkers, sliders from there don't really play to lefties. So let's just stick to here with cutters and change-ups and yeah. uh, like a fastball from here. So it's really like how the pitches play to each hitter. Like the sinkers only play to the righties and the four seams don't really only play to the lefties. So that's kind of what the attack plan is. That's cool, man. That's cool. Like yeah. I used to, and that's funny. Like we've got a buddy of mine here and it's funny. Cause we always give him, we give him a lot of shit. Cause his name's Tom. Mm -hmm. Cause he used to throw, he's a lefty he played at Baylor, yeah. but he used to throw right here. And then he used to, cause he had a lot of issues with his arm and then he started throwing underhand and we we're just like, dude, what are you doing, man? Like that's just right. like, he tried, he tried the summer reading route and we're always just like, what the, what you, why would you do that? Dude? Like, right. really? like what, yeah. what are you hey, doing? Man? Let me tell you, man. And there's times I'll go play catch and there's high school kids or parents watching and uh, I'll, all right, sinker, and I'll drop down. I'm like, man, there's this is what they don't want their kids to watch because they tell their kids all the time, stop throwing sidearm. Stop you know? throwing sidearm, yeah. And I'm over here doing it. So, <laughs> but hey, dude, whatever works with you for you, man. Like I tried, I tried the whole thing, the side thing. It didn't work for me. I was, I was worse off that way. But, yeah. Like man, do you I, get so when you do the drop off from the side, do you throw a two seam from like that, and you get that run towards the outer half, so you get away from the yeah. lefty. Is that is that what you're aiming for there? Yeah. So it, think of it like. Um, 
if so if it sinks it's going away from the lefty uh it was a lot of trial and error early and on they would just mm-hmm. slap it through the six hole so it's just Ooh, running yeah. into the barrel so that's when i was like all right i gotta stop throwing the sinkers to the lefties and then but then you see the righties just get buried in or they just roll over the top of it i was like well right. that's what we're gonna do all the time and then you figure out the locations to it but that thing runs like i said even with the slider it's perfect combination kind of thing so awesome man yeah that's yeah. that's where it's at bro like that's i guess like i guess mm-hmm. I guess in the big leagues is different because you would just want it to like tip the end of the plate, right? You don't want them to, you don't want the ball to catch too much of the plate. But I guess if it does, that's easy for them to just slap to the other way. I guess is that yeah. pretty much what the issues with throwing that pitch, right? Yeah, and it was really bad. It was really one organization. I remember the Tigers team uh, just doing it. They had a bunch of lefties. And they would just, call sinker, and I'm like, here comes a six hole, and they would just, boom six hole, and I'm like, yep, damn, I'm over it. Yeah, I'm over <laughs> it. But luckily, the Astros were just trial and error, and they didn't take too much heart into it. There you go. Yeah. So. So stepping away from baseball for a second, what what does Ralph do in his spare time? Ralph, the person, Ralph, away from baseball. I know you got all the studio stuff. Is that your house? Is that where you got that set up? Yeah, uh, this is uh, this is uh, our extra room over here. It's just a little stuff. We have some jerseys in the back, some uh, some vinyls and stuff. But uh, cool, cool. Yeah, it's really uh, golf. Um, golf, there we go. Kind of outside. I just picked up uh, photography with all the bouncing around cities I go to from high or okay. play to the big league. So. I recently got into that and uh, kind of just toying around with that right now, the camera. That's kind of so. cool, though. Yeah, I think, like, yeah. it's good. Like, that's what I tell. Like, you know, it's funny, man. Like, my dad and my parents at the time, like, people don't take into account. Like, obviously, you've, you've ran with this, and I'm sure your baseball career is far from over. I'm sure you have a lot going. But it's important to develop yourself, and I tell this to a lot of people. It's, like, to develop yourself and develop hobbies because the game does end at some point, and it's, like, mm-hmm. you want to be well-rounded and well-versed in other aspects of your life. So that's awesome you're doing photography, bro. That, that's, you know, like, it, you know what's funny, though, is, like, in me going to JUCO, like, all the dudes I met playing ball that are, like, big leaguers are playing now, mm-hmm. all East Texas dudes. So you know that all they ever do is they're just hunting, dude, all off season, They're just always hunting, always hunting. Yeah, like, yeah. It's insane. But, like, do you that's, go hunting often or no? No, I don't do hunting, man. I've been like a couple of times in my life, but it's not really my deal. Like I'm from like the, in the funny, you know, what's funny dude is like half these dudes when I went to go over there. Cause I went to Lufkin. I went to Angelina college in like Lufkin, okay. Texas. Yeah. I had so, a friend that went there. Yeah. Yeah. So I went over there mm-hmm. and I was like the city kid. Cause I'm from San Antonio and all these dudes are from like these little rural <laughs> cities. Right. Around here, dude. It yeah. was nuts. I was, it was so weird. And I'm like, no, I don't hunt. They're like, you're just like, what do you do? And I'm like, well, you know, play video games i do other shit but they're just like well like we're gonna go hunting either you want to come hunting with us i'm like no nah, that's not my, that's not they my thing bro they couldn't fathom staying in or like doing stuff no like they, that. they don't understand that thing so like now like like i've had like three interviews with guys that are because they do a lot of guides or they do hunting so i've been having like all kinds of phone interviews with dudes oh, off yeah, season is just it's hunting season for them, man that's what they're doing right now very true i mean yeah, I actually have uh, my roommate. He a uh, big, big hunter, like gun guy, because he works at a pawn shop. And I can't mm-hmm. tell you one thing we will do now. That you tell me, uh, my buddy has some space. We'll go out and pop some rounds off, but never really hunt, you know. Yeah, that's still fun though. Like I can't say I haven't. Like I've, I've got my fair share of guns, and like I'll go to the range and stuff. But other than that, it's like yeah, not really my thing. Yeah, it's, it, but it is what it is. But yeah, man, that's super tight. Like I saw your Instagram. You got some stuff. You got some photography pictures on there. It's pretty cool. Yeah, starting man. Starting out slow, but we'll see where it goes. So, so what's so what's next this year, man? So you're looking for a place to play this year? Or is there is are you are there kind of? And I don't know if you can talk about it. So for, feel free to shut me down. I don't know what you've got moving on. Are there any teams that like are in mind where you're looking to move to or anything like that? Um, look where I'm looking to move to. Not really in general. Uh, any team that looks that needs a guy that'll you know eat up some innings and put up some zeros yeah. for you. I'm I'm the guy, but. There's there's a few teams. Uh, hopefully today uh, we'll, we'll see what happens with some with that bullpen and everything. There's like I think there's maybe two or three teams that are going to be there. Okay. Uh, I'm not really how sure all that stuff works or if I should be saying anything. So I'm just going to hold it tight. Hold, hold it. Okay. It, cool. Yeah. Hold it tight for now. But because <laughs> uh, I got a couple, I got a couple buddies of mine that are doing it, and they were like, and I, they're like, well, I can tell you like who's going to be there. Yeah. Like who's going to be it? Because they're all like at this point, I guess, like the two buddies of mine that I know they're free agents at the moment, they're like doing mm-hmm. the same thing. They're like, I'm going to travel here. I got to mm-hmm. throw here. I got to go throw over here. And I'm like, well, who's going to be there? And like, well, I'll tell you who. And I'm like, but who? Like, like we're homies. Yeah. He's like, oh, we'll talk. We'll talk later. Like, I can't tell you right now. Oh, that's <laughs> so tough, I'm man. like, all right, whatever. It's fine. Yeah. But like, yeah. So I didn't know. Like, some people are real eager to tell you, like, oh, well, these guys are going to be here and this is where I'm leaning. But some guys are like, yeah, I'm just going to hold off. I can't, can't really get yeah. too much information. But I so does your, so you have an agent, right? I'm sure your agent handles all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my agent Jordan, he's a really good guy. He's actually uh, 
an agent for a couple other teammates that I was playing with recently. And uh, he's a really good guy. But yeah, he, he'll handle most of that stuff right there. Cool, cool. So, yeah. so for the most point, you're you're pretty much just training most days. Is that what? So, what's an off season? I know we're we're approaching the hour, so we won't keep you too long. I know you got some stuff you got to take care of, but yeah. what? So, what's an off season look like? Are you lifting X amount of days a week? How many days are you throwing a week? What What's your off season look like? Uh, off season early on, it's uh, I'll be lifting probably four to five five days a week, and then cardio the other two days or a rest day in between. Um, but right now it's four times a week and then I'll be throwing probably four or five times uh, a week as well, just depending on catch partners and stuff. Sometimes I have to throw into a net, but really, um, hey, dude, I catch, dude. Let me know. I'll come catch your pins, dude. Yeah. Hey, well, we got a contact information now, man. We yeah, there you go, man. Something. I'll come catch your pins. I got, I got gear. I got it all. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be up for it. We got to get, I got to get down the uh, baseball express again and take my pops. Yeah, dude, we got some good stuff. So, so do you, yeah. so, and this is one of the things I asked, like, is there, so do you kind of put yourself on a pitch count or like, so like, especially after a season, like, and I, everyone's got a different, like my buddy King is on a, he does a, he does a small, like six week throwing program at the end of the year. Do you mm -hmm. do something like that to kind of just like kind of ease the, ease your arm off from the, from like the stresses of the season and then kind of get back into bullpens or how, how do you do that? Yeah. Um, uh, it's more of a range of motion thing. I like to call it. Uh, I kind of picked it up in college with our pitching coach, uh, Giese. And it's just really make sure your arms move in, but nothing too strenuous. Gotcha. And then that's probably for like maybe a week, week and a half. And then once my arm feels like, all right, it's kind of cooled down enough, take a break and then we will ramp it up. And then, um, but that's obviously it's, you got to take it. You got to be careful with that stuff. Yeah. That's one of those things. Cause dude, believe me, my arm, like when I throw, like, cause I, I coach in the spring. So I'll throw BP to guys and our head coach is like, dude, <laughs> like he'll have me throw BP every day. And I'm like, you do know, like, my arm is like, it looks like, and just, I tell people this all the time. Like when I went to get my MRI for the first time, uh -huh. the doctor was like, Hey dude, it looks like a grenade literally blew up in your elbow. Like it's that bad. And, you're and I was me like, it feels like it. It definitely feels like it. Oh my gosh. I can't imagine what that feels like. You're crazy, man. Dude. But I'll go out, like I'll go play men's league and shit sometimes like just to like screw around and just see how hard I can throw. And like the other day I was like so heartbroken. Cause I thought like I've been training, like I'm in like the best shape I've been in like forever. So mm -hmm. I go out there and I'm throwing. I'm like, I got to be throwing like back to where I was. Like the scar tissue's healed, right? And my buddy's like, dude, you're only throwing like 84, 85. <laughs> and you're like, dude, <laughs> and don't like, say that, man. I'm like, dude, <laughs> you just broke my heart. I thought I was back in the 90s again. So, right? Like you feel good, right? But your elbow's I like. I felt good. Nope. And then tomorrow, the next day I wake up and my girlfriend's like, yeah, all right. And I'm like, dude, I can't move. Like my whole arm is like <laughs> broken. <laughs> Dude, but it, it's all good, man. Wild, it's a man. blast. It's a blast, man. But like yeah, man. So if there's anything you want to say, we're, we'll head out here. You don't have to hang up right away. I'll, I'll kind of give you the, the post process after we after we end the call. Um, yeah. But yeah. So if there's anything you want to say to anybody, you've got the floor, man. Anything you got coming up aside from from the stuff you don't want to talk about because that stuff's coming up. That's good stuff. But we'll, we'll let you keep that one to yourself. If there's yeah. any final thoughts you want to give to the kids or anybody listening right now, the floor is yours, brother. Um. Don't stop working, fellas. Uh, you may hear some things that you don't like from people that are watching you or, you know, saying that you can't do it or anything, but just keep your head down and work. And then when you're done and everything's said and done, see where you're at. All right. That's all you got to do day by day. There it is. There it is from the man himself. All right, man. Well, thank you, Ralph. Thanks for coming on. We really appreciate it, especially having another homegrown kid here from that knows about us and who we are. Yeah, um, this episode that. will be available on all streaming services and on YouTube, on Apple, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon, wherever you get your podcasts. Um, yeah, this one should be airing, I want to say, the first week of February. We'll have this one up and running, um, oh. and it should be on YouTube sub subsequently afterwards. But, yeah, thanks, Ralph, for coming on, man. We really appreciate it, and we'll catch everyone in the next one. Thanks, guys. Cool. Appreciate it.